be home at six sharp. If you need anything, call. I mean, you think... <laughs> Love you, sweetie. Um, mm. And the me, 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 Call if you need us. They bought it. Pardon me while I have a strange envelope. Buy you a couple of baboons. What are you looking at? Breaking the Fourth Wall is one of the most unique thematic devices at the disposal of a filmmaker. Most cinematic techniques pull us into a story and make us forget we're watching a film, but Breaking the Fourth Wall does the opposite. It reminds us we're actually an audience member watching what's happening on screen. I can't believe we're paying to see something we get on TV for free. If you ask me, everybody in this theater is a giant sucker, especially you. The technique can contribute to the visual storytelling of a film in many different ways depending on how it's presented. To really understand the power of breaking the fourth wall, we have to look at its inception and theatrical performance. A fiddler on the roof. Sounds crazy, no? A formal definition for breaking the fourth wall would be a dramatic technique in a work of fiction where characters display an awareness that they are in such a work. You might say, every one of us is a fiddler on the roof. The technique goes as far back as ancient Greece and continued through Shakespeare time and well into postmodern theater, especially musicals. The term first arose after the use of box sets became popular in the 1800s, when sets were constructed with three walls, the fourth wall being the imaginary wall between the audience and the performers on stage. So whenever a character acknowledged the audience's presence, the fourth wall was broken. The technique has been used since the silent era, and Charlie Chaplin played around extensively with fourth wall breaks in his films. With the introduction of sound and the popularity of the musical genre, fourth wall breaks became more common to contribute to the spectacle of film. And over the next 70 years, fourth wall breaks have made their way into a variety of film genres with a variety of thematic effects. Who are all singing all dancing crap at the world? The most popular use of this technique is for comedy, and the comedy stands out by creating some of the most memorable punchlines in cinematic history. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, that's funny because I happen to have Mr. McLuhan right here. So, so, yeah, just let me, let me, let me, come over here a second. Oh, Tell I, heard, I heard what you were saying. You, you know nothing of my work. You mean my whole fallacy is wrong. How you ever got to teach a course in anything is totally amazing. Boy, if life were only like this. There's something really surprising and hilarious about reminding us that we're in the middle of watching a film. No matter how many times I watch a movie break the fourth wall, the joke can still catch me by surprise. What a pisser. The joke has to step out of the film to deliver the punchline, and there's really no other type of joke like it. Every other joke is enclosed within the imaginary world of the art form. Taking that step out of a movie is what makes a good fourth wall joke so satisfying and creative. Well, that's where I see things just a little differently. Contractor, no. I will not bow to any sponsor. I do want to note that breaking the fourth wall doesn't automatically make you a comedic genius. The setup and delivery of a fourth wall break has to be at least somewhat surprising or the joke can come off as kind of lazy. Jay and Silent Bob movie? Who would pay to see that? Eh. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all, too. Yes. Eh. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the middle of the film. Much better. You can't talk about breaking the fourth wall without mentioning Mel Brooks. He broke the fourth wall in the most extreme ways possible. I lost. I lost. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to lose. Let me see the script. His films go so far as to actually have the main characters watch themselves within the movie. Stop. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? Well, what do you want to do now? Come on, let's check out the end of the flick. Yeah. 
Gee, I sure hope there's a happy ending. While his films are funny because of their ridiculousness, there's definitely some method to his madness. I like how Blazing Saddles uses fourth wall breaks to poke fun at the western genre as a whole. It really points out how unrealistic Hollywood films were in their portrayal of life in the west. In reality, western films were nothing but actors in a studio acting in fake towns and eventually getting into a car to drive off the set. Blazing Saddles is a not so subtle reminder that film as an art form has its limitations at portraying reality. Mel Brooks made a statement by pointing out the lack of realism in the Western film. Western films of the 40s, 50s, and 60s almost completely ignore racism, xenophobia, and other ugly parts of the West. And Blazing Saddles breaks the fourth wall in an insane way to remind us we're watching a dramatized film, not reality. Could have thought of another way to get us here. Here we go again, Junior. We're all on the Perhaps what makes breaking the fourth wall the most intriguing is that depending on its context, the act of acknowledging the audience can actually push us into the film instead of pulling us out. There's a sort of intimacy to a character speaking directly to us. In Road to Morocco, Bing Crosby and Bob Hope make lighthearted jokes straight to the audience and even remind us that they're going to end up fine on their adventure. For any villains we may meet, we haven't any fear. Paramount will protect us cause we're signed for five more years. We we know from the casual and inviting fourth wall breaks that this is a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously and will provide light, conservative entertainment. Fourth wall breaks can be a way to welcome us into the story, and this variation of the technique is definitely indicative of a more casual movie. We're Morocco A fourth wall break can make us intimate with a character as well as with a story. There's really no stronger way to show a character's motives than by having them look right at us and say them. If I go for 10, I'm probably gonna have to barf up a lung, so I better make this one count. It's a great way to show us what's going on in a character's head and is comparable to an aside in theater. Frank Underwood addressing us directly is the foundation for so much of the energy in House of Cards. Good, and Donald, don't let this get you down. Why, together we're gonna do more than you've been able to do in 25 years. I love the scenes where he says one thing to another character and then looks at us and reminds us what he's really after. Two things are now irrelevant. Donald Blythe and Donald Blythe's new drafts. Eventually I hope to rewrite the bill myself. Forward, that is the battle cry. Leave ideology to the armchair generals. Does me no good. The final great effect of breaking the fourth wall is to unsettle. There's nothing scarier than feeling safe and removed from the villain in a movie and then having that villain look directly at you. <laughs> I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Yikes. Comedy, satire, intimacy, and fear can all be accomplished just from a look to the camera. So don't forget the great potential a fourth wall break can have. And thanks for watching. What are, you, what are you doing in here? This is my room. Get out. Get out. I'm making the video. Get out. Hello. What does a guy have to do to get some privacy around here?